On this week's Waypoint, a new client is finally in the works, 4.11 brought huge changes, and surprise, surprise, Cassadin is still a problem. What's up guys, and welcome to Waypoint, your weekly League of Legends recap for July 10th, 2014. I'm your host, Lindsay Geektron. The biggest news of the week is something that everyone's been asking for. There's finally a new client and patcher in the works. Seriously, it's actually happening. It'll be on the PBE for 4.12, but right now it's mainly just a visual thing. It's not the end-all be-all of problems with the League client. That's something they're working towards though, and for the first time ever we actually have some proof of that. Stability is the most important thing to Riot, so they're not going to make sweeping changes all at once. Next they'll tell us we're actually getting a replay system! JK. Aww. Let's dive right into the patch notes for 4.12, which had a surprising number of big picture changes. For starters, early kills pre-4 minutes are more rewarding, although there's still a penalty to prevent super early snowballing. That's what she said. At the moment, kills really aren't that big of a deal. It's all about objectives, especially with Dragon giving a ton of gold. Part of the problem is that killstreak bounties give so much gold back to the other team that just one screw up can be a huge deal. Seeing that, Riot have lowered the bounty increase per kill and increased the 500 gold bounty cap from 4 kills to 5 kills. What do you guys think of the change? Let us know in the comments down below. Kills are totally way more fun than turrets and dragons, so this could be a good direction for League to go in, which is why some of the other big picture changes that were in the patch are a little weird. First, there's turrets. They now do significantly more damage per hit and ramp up to their full damage against a single target in just two hits instead of three. On top of that, turrets now acquire targets slightly faster, which further increases their damage per second and gives something new for players to learn. On top of that, the experience range of lane minions has been noticeably increased. These two changes really seem counterintuitive to what Riot was going for with the bounty change. The bounty change encourages kills and aggression, but the turret change discourages diving, and the experience range change makes it harder to zone your opponent. It's good for two versus one situations for sure, making the poor top laner a lot safer and letting them get experience more easily. But the negative implications outside of that scenario far outweigh the positives though. On the other hand, jugglers can accidentally leech experience from their mid laner while they're doing race now. Yay? Moving on to champion changes, as expected, Braum got a nerf to the damage to his passive, hopefully making him less of an early game bully. The good news for Braum fans is that the man with the stash will now more easily jump over walls when using his W on an ally. Because as we all know, in the league of dashes, you either have mobility or you're never played. Sorry. Jax, who I have a recurring nightmare about, has finally been nerfed. He's been super dominant in the top lane for a long time, scaling into an absolute monster after a supposedly weak game. In a lot of matchups though, Jax does decently well early and he's harder than you might think to shut down. To try and give his opponents a chance, his base health, health per level, and armor per level have all been hit relatively hard. In theory, this will help smart teams keep Jax down and perhaps force a lamp wielding jerk to build a bit more defensively. Kale is a case study in why invulnerability and massive damage aren't necessarily an easy combo to balance. Her attack speed's been hit, as well as the AP ratio on her fiery auto attack spell thingy. More significantly though is an extra 20 second cooldown on her ultimate at all ranks. This makes it much less likely it'll end up in every fight and give her opponents larger windows to punish her lane bullying. Nidalee has been buffed in literally every area, which is a really strange thing to say. We all thought Nidalee was in an okay place after her rework, which really wasn't that long ago. Her base health and armor have been buffed, she's faster while hunting, her javelin projectile is wider, and her trap cooldown is lower. In cougar form, she can pounce further, use primal surge for less mana, and triggering the hunt resets her ultimate cooldown if she's in human form, giving her even more chase potential. Hopefully these changes won't push her over the edge, she is definitely a strong champion once again. In an effort to bring back tanky, supporty junglers, Maokai saw major changes in this patch. His mana costs across the board have been lowered, which is a huge deal because he's always had problems with that blue buff. His twisted advance now does percentage max health, but his range has been nerfed to compensate. The damage on his sapling toss has been nerfed, but now applies to slow. His ultimate is no longer targetable, instead it's basically an aura moving around Maokai. 
Overall, if Riot wanted a tanky, supporty jungler, they've made one. Maokai has insane peel and support for his squishies, but now there's a concern he'll just get run over early by Elise, Evelyn, and Lee Sin. A big part of the tanky jungler revival is coming in the form of the item changes. Machete has lost its maim and butcher passives for super fast jungle farming. Instead, it'll give attack damage versus monsters, but more importantly, reduce damage taken by monsters. It's pretty clever because it actually favors slower junglers as the longer you take to clear, the more damage you reduce. The cost of the item has been bumped up to an awkward 325 gold though, meaning you can only buy 4 health pots at level 1. I guess the damage reduction makes up for it, but it seems a little redundant. With 700 gold, you can combine your machete and a cloth armor into a fancy new quill coat. Quill coat gives 20 armor, a free ward on a 180 second cooldown, and an incredibly powerful passive. Attacking monsters lose percentage maximum health, and the wearer gains huge health and mana regeneration while fighting monsters. This really might be the item the tank junglers like Sack, Nautilus, and Maokai need to make a comeback. Crossing our fingers. Riot have given a gameplay patch forecast on 4.12! Already! With the World Championship coming up, the big changes of the next few patches will be made with competitive play in mind. These changes might also not make it to the 4.12 patch, it's just what the balance team is currently working on. For starters, Ari is a bit of a middle of the road pick right now. Riot would like to give her a boost without pushing her into 100% pick ban territory like in Season 3. The Nine-Tailed Fox Lady is a super popular champion for some reason, and she's really fun to play and watch, so a few buffs would be good, even though she's not at all unplayable as is. Alistar is pretty much a non-existent champion at the moment, but his core kit is still incredibly strong. His headbutt and knockup make for one of the most devastating combos in the entire game. Riot would like to see him back in the support role, but are concerned they'll make him a quote, insane jungling cow god in the process. Understandable. Hopefully, that doesn't mean that Alistar Jungle is dead and buried though, he definitely fits the tanky support jungler description. Plus, seeing an Alistar tower dive is just hilarious. Cassidy, Cassidy, Cassidy. Cassidy got just three words in the patch forecast. Quote, this guy. Man, yeah, that sounds about right. Good luck, Riot, you can totally do it. We believe in you. Despite the large nerf to one of his core items in Bloodthirster, Lucian still remains a very strong, very safe AD carry. He's not quite a must-pick champion anymore, but you can't go wrong by picking him, and he really doesn't have any meaningful weaknesses. Going forward, Riot wants to keep his mobility and burst and AD caster vibe, but he'll probably lose some of his other strengths in the balancing process. On the subject of top-tier aggro junglers keeping everyone else out of the metagame, Riot, of course, realize it's a problem, but it's too early at this point to say anything else. Hopefully the 4.11 item changes will help, and if not, more changes to the jungle are likely to come in 4.13 after the next patch. Do you know what's hard to do while playing League of Legends? Reading. Seriously, I tried. I fed like crazy! That's why I use Audible.com. Whether it's in the car, playing League of Legends, or just chilling in bed, Audible is the best way to get your audiobook fixed. With great prices, tons of special promotions, and sales for members, Audible offer everything from The Hunger Games to Game of Thrones to Star Wars. There's honestly just about something for everyone on Audible.com. The best part? Audible have a great listen guarantee, so if you don't like your choice, simply return it and try again. If you're interested, head on over to Audible.com slash GameBreaker and start your free 30-day trial. And just for signing up, you'll receive a free audiobook that's yours to keep. That URL again is audible.com slash gamebreaker. That does it for this week's episode of Waypoint. For more video game news and content, head on over to gamebreaker.tv. Be sure to check back every week for the latest League of Legends news. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment below to help us reach more people. And if you want more League of Legends recaps, news, and updates, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, LOL Nation TV. I'm Lindsay Geektron. You can follow me on Twitter at Lindsay Geektron. Thanks everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you guys at the next waypoint. Game Breaker TV.